Hey everybody, it's Tim Tialdo. Every year, thousands of women retire from the pageant world and begin their professional journey. But most of them try to make the transition without a solid plan. And then they're left with the post-pageant feeling of frustration, depression, and wondering, well, what do I do now? But it doesn't have to be that way. That's why I created the Life After the Crown Starter Guide. It's filled with seven essential principles to help you make a successful transition to the real world. Everything from figuring out your why and creating a well-thought-out vision to really figuring out what will be the best path for you personally. There's no need to struggle anymore with not having a path or direction. Let me help you through it. To grab your absolutely free copy of the Life After the Crown Starter Guide, just go to timtialdo.com slash starter guide, type in your email, and I'll send it to you right away. Don't put it off. Now is the time to start preparing for life after pageants, and this guide is a logical first step. So what are you waiting for? Go to my site and grab it free right now. Enjoy today's podcast, everybody. Hey, y'all. It's Miss USA 2009, Kristen Dalton-Wolf, and you're listening to Life After the Crown with Tim Tialdo. Hey everybody, welcome to the Life After the Crown podcast, where each episode I bring you useful interviews with former pageant contestants, title holders, and women of influence who are now succeeding across many different industries in the real world. My name is Tim Tialdo, lifestyle entrepreneur, pageant host, author, and quite honestly, somebody who just wants to help you become a better person overall. Now, if pageant life is over for you, or it soon could be, and you're wondering, well, what do I do now? Or what's next? This podcast is designed to help make the transition to real life and the school of hard knocks a little bit easier for you to handle. So if this is your first time listening, thanks for tuning in. We're glad you're with us today. Let's get started. We will now reveal the judge's final decision. If for any reason the new Miss USA cannot fulfill her duties, the first runner-up will take over. The first runner-up is... California, Carrie Prashan. Which means the new Miss USA 2009 is North Carolina, Kristen Dalton. How do you feel right now as Miss USA? I'm so excited. This is my lifelong dream and I cannot believe it's coming true. There is Kristen Dalton Wolf winning Miss USA 2009 at Planet Hollywood in Las Vegas. Surely an amazing moment that she will never forget. In addition to her Miss USA title, Kristen is the creator and founder of She Is More, an online magazine read by over 400,000 readers per month that spreads God's message that every woman is royalty. She is also the author of Rise Up Princess, 60 Days to Revealing Her Royal Identity, and Rise Up with God, The Guided Journal. And her next book, The Sparkle Effect, is coming soon. She married her now husband, Chris, in 2013, and they recently welcomed their little girl, Aurora, to the world. Kristen Dalton Wolf, honored to have you on the podcast today. And uh, by the way, congrats on being a mama. Oh, thank you, Tim. <laughs> I'm so excited to have this conversation today. It's going to be so fun. Yeah, me too. Me too. Well, I'll tell you what, I want to talk a little bit about She Is More because I, I love not only what you're doing with She Is More, but what your husband is doing with Good Guy Swag and just what you guys have been doing since, you know, obviously your, your pageant days ended. So could you tell us a little bit more about what led to the creation of that website and platform? I mean, I just, first of all, I just love that you're doing this podcast podcast well, because it's so relevant and I guess probably a big reason that led to She Is More really did kind of stem from just my year coming off of being Miss USA because my childhood dream was to be Miss USA since I was three years old. Mm-hmm. You know, we watched Miss USA every year in my house. It was like a holiday. I have two younger sisters. Um, my mom is Miss North Carolina USA and she had her trophy and crown sitting on the dresser um, as I was growing up and I would, you know, practice my winning moment. And and, um, so it was definitely a dream of a dream of mine. And then as a teenager and then in my early twenties, you know, that like innocent um, magical dream can sometimes get tainted Mm -hmm. when you maybe go through life defining moments that aren't necessarily good. And I had a few of those. One of them was when I was in the seventh grade, I was in a science class and my teacher called on me, asked a question, asked me for the answer and I got it wrong. And she was like, it's okay. You're just a dumb blonde. (laughs) So, yeah. Wow. It, yeah. So in that moment, I made a vow 
to myself that I was like, you know what? It's okay. I'm going to prove her wrong. And any and anyone else who thinks that I'm dumb, I'm going to prove to people that I'm smart. So I kind of made these resolves with myself. Like I'm going to prove to people that I am beautiful, that I am confident and that I'm smart. And all of that was kind of wrapped up into also wanting to be a role model and to want to make a difference. So anyways, I thought that if I finally won Miss USA, that I would prove that to myself and, you know, whoever else, because, you know, we always have uh, these things that that we feel like we need to prove. And I mean, really the audience is kind of imaginary. Like they don't really care as much. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I was like, if I could just win Miss USA, then I will finally feel this way. And then I won. And honestly, I, I mean, it was shocking to me the first week that I actually felt I mean, I was, of course, elated and so happy. Like, wow, I mean, this actually came true because a lot of my pageant career, I was a runner up. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of was like, hmm, this doesn't feel like what I thought it was going to feel like. In my whole year, I totally soaked it up. I never complained. Um, I mean, it's a 24 7 job, and honestly, I loved it. But after the crown, I definitely was like, okay, how do I measure up to that kind of success? Like, how do I keep this kind of success going? Because, you know, once you like reach this pinnacle and for the girls listening, it's like once you win this crown and you have this year in the life and you make appearances and events and you have sponsors and people doing your makeup and um, things like that. And then all of a sudden it's literally gone. The next day you're like, oh, no one wants the picture with me anymore. (laughs) Um, And so I moved out to Los Angeles to try to capitalize on my year as Miss USA. And I remember I was going through a time of just discouragement, feeling down on myself. And someone said to me, um, I was started going to this church and I was raised a Christian my whole life. But someone said to me, for the first time, or for the first time I had ears to hear this, mm-hmm. they said, Kristen, don't you know that you are a daughter of the king? And I was like, what? <laughs> I mean, that moment was like the world, tur- my world turned upside down. I had this paradigm shifting moment all in a matter of seconds where I was like, whoa, I am the daughter of the king of the universe. And that means that I'm royalty. That means that my whole life I had been striving to become something, striving to become a queen or striving to become confident or striving to become beautiful or seen or noticed or worthy. And actually all along, I already was all of those things. And once I realized, oh my gosh, like I already am all of those things, then I had this paradigm shifting moment where I realized that means I can operate from a place of victory rather than for victory all the time. And that takes the pressure off. Well, it sounds like you found, and I like to share this with the girls, your why. And a lot of times they'll go through, and maybe even you went through the pageant system without a true core why in place of why I'm here, why I exist, what I'm going to do with this, where it's going to go. Did you feel like that moment kind of unfolded after the pageant life? I definitely knew that I wanted to be Miss USA because I really wanted to be a role model. I really wanted to be an inspiration to other girls. I I was so excited to be able to travel to schools and like, you know, speak about dreams and purity and standards in your life. But I think the main issue was that I wasn't super solid. I thought that I was like confident, yeah. but I wasn't, I didn't really and truly know my identity. And I think that is really key because if everyone knows that they already are worthy and that they already do have power and authority that they can walk in and operate in, that they already are more valuable than rare jewels, then, then they don't have to like try to prove themselves. Everything that they do will be from this place of rest and like, oh my gosh, because I have all of this within me and because God is my dad 
and because I'm royalty, then everything will just flow from that place. And I love that. And I love that you've been able to basically take the principle of that and turn it into a business. So kind of talk about, you know, what you do with the website, your blogs, your videos, and just the platform itself to kind of affect this generation of not only pageant contestants, but just women in general. Well, I got really excited because when I heard that you were a daughter of the king, I was like, I want to know more about that. I'm really going to study this out, press into it. And as I did, one day I was listening to a, um, a Joyce Meyer podcast and girls, if you don't listen to Joyce Meyer, she's amazing. You should. <laughs> um, <laughs> and she goes, um, she was like, you need to remember the promises um, that God says that God has for you. You need to know what God says about you. And I was like, what? God says stuff about us. I need to figure out what he says. And keep in mind, I was raised a Christian my whole life and I, st- and I didn't really know that. So one of the things that I found, and this is what my website is derives from, is the verse that says, she is more precious than rare jewels. Mm-hmm. And I get really excited about that because if every girl knew and knows that if you think of the most valuable jewel in the whole entire world and think of it like in a museum behind a glass case and you cannot even pay money for it, that is what you are worth. So do me a favor. I want you to juxtapose what it felt like to wear a physical crown as Miss USA and then compare that to when you truly found your faith and that feeling of royalty, what what was the difference for you? Well, I mean, wearing the Miss USA crown is always going to be a fun feeling. And it's always like glamorous and like, oh my gosh, look at me. But I guess the difference is like you you take off the crown. You know, it's um, it lasts for one year. There's moments of it. You take off the sash. But as God's daughter, you get to walk in it every single day for all the years of your life, even when you start You feel like your beauty is fading because charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. And so it's kind of exciting because whereas like in the pageant world or 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 any world really, like a title, accolade, um, fame is kind of can be short lived. It has like a time frame to it. Whereas being a daughter, a daughter of the king. You just keep growing and transforming into into the woman that God created you to be. So it's almost like there's like this escalating feeling rather than like a, a time frame feeling. So take me back for just a second. You're part of an elite group that can say that she has held the title of Miss USA. And for the audience who is listening, I want you to tell me the difference between the expectations that you had of winning the crown and what it was like to actually participate in that year versus... Uh, the reality, sometimes crushing, sometimes great of being Miss USA. Yeah, I guess I thought that if I won Miss USA, like my career in entertainment would 100% be launched. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think they all think that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, to- I I guess I thought it would be like my ticket to like my next dream, um, which I wasn't even really sure what that was. But I thought that like that year would kind of give me more clarity into what that was and that it would definitely open that door. Like I would 100% have a job, you know, like an offer that I couldn't deny right after the year was over. And yeah, that I would be set. I'd be rolling in the dough. <laughs> <you know. laughs> and I'm guessing that wasn't exactly the reality that you faced. Uh, no, it wasn't. But it definitely opens doors. So, and and I'm sure that girls have said this on the podcast so far, but I'm sure that girls who are listening probably know this to an extent, but really like you might think that once I get to this level, then, you know, I'll have managers and publicists and people who are like working for me Mm -hmm. and making things happen, which is true to an extent, but they, they care more about the brand than about you, which is you know, that's not a bad thing. That's their job. But it's your job to um, extend the brand of the title into your personal goals. So you have to be the one who really advocates for yourself. You have to be very clear on what you want from the beginning and really make no apologies. Be bold and, and don't be afraid to be bold because it says in the Bible that 
the righteous are bold as a lion. Love that verse. Um, Love that yeah. verse. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're going to spend the money and the time and the exhaustion and and get all the people on board to help you with this dream of becoming Miss USA or Miss America or whatever it is, then you better be super clear on what it is that you want out of it and be bold enough to work it while you have the title. Now, you, like many former Miss USAs, moved out to L.A., you know, I think in many ways thinking, you know, I need to be out there in order to further my career and take advantage of those opportunities that you thought you might get. Um, did you find that there is a definite – I remember talking to Shandy Finnessy about this. There is a grind that happens once you get out there and it all reality sets in and it's like, wait a minute, I thought this was going to be easy. You know, when I first moved out here, which was seven or eight years ago now, so crazy – uh, this is this is another part of um, not knowing your identity mm-hmm. is is comparison. I thought I was over comparison because I learned how to not do that when I was competing because it's a mental thing. Like you cannot do it or you will die, girls. Just so you know, <laughs> um, <clears throat> like you will be done. Basically, if you compare yourself, you will not win. But so I thought I was over that. But when I moved out here, I, I started comparing myself to other former Miss USA's. Uh, like I would like check their Twitters and be like, what are they doing uh, to, to kind of gauge how I was doing as a former Miss USA? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, there definitely is a there is a grind. And uh, now it's really nice. Like seven years later, I don't really feel that sense of tension in my chest anymore. That like hustle and grind or, you know, I got to like. I got to prove myself. I got to look good. I, I have to, I want to be like a former Miss USA that other girls like want to be like, you know, a lot of people want to be like Olivia Colpo because she's has a huge following and she has great opportunities. And, and so it can be easy as a former to be like, I want to, you know, I want to be like that, or I feel like I failed or I didn't do the title justice or I didn't capitalize out on it enough, but I don't really feel like that anymore. And I think it's really just because I'm very clear on what my calling is. And I really trust in God's timing. And he is way more concerned, girls, way more concerned about our character um, being refined to match the task that he's calling us to. So if he has a big calling on your your life, he's going to keep you at a certain level while he's working stuff out on you before you get elevated. So I just want to encourage you, um, even as you're listening, that, you know, God is always preparing us for something and we get to decide if we're going to partner with him on that or not. And the faster we partner with him on it, the faster we get through the tests, the faster we get promoted to the promised land. <laughs> well, speaking of preparing, you are getting ready to release your next book. It's, it's called The Sparkle Effect. Can you tell us about it? Yes, I am so excited about The Sparkle Effect. So this is my first traditionally published book. My last two were self-published. And this one is by the same publishing house as two of my favorite author speakers, actually three of them, Joyce Meyer, Joel Osteen, and John Maxwell. Very good. So uh, anyways, so it's the sparkle effect. Step into the radiance of your true identity. And this book is it's a lot about my Miss USA journey. And, and actually, Shandy Finnessy is involved in this, Tim. Oh, cool. The night that I won Miss USA. So, like, I wasn't a front runner when I was competing. I don't really think people predicted me to win. I wasn't really, you know, on the front. I wasn't really on the front lines. So that night after I won, um, the judges, like, came up to me and Shandy specifically, who I was so excited to meet because she was one of my favorite Miss USAs. And she was like, Kristen, I just want to let you know that after the commercial break, all of the judges leaned into me and they were like, cause you know, they're celebrity judges. They don't like pad. They're not like seasoned pageant judges. And she's like, they leaned into me and and Shady was the head judge, by the way. Yes. Uh, All leaned into her and they're like, um, uh, how do we know who to choose? All these girls are beautiful. They all have beautiful gowns. Like, how do we know what to do? And she goes, you'll see it in one girl. It's the girl who sparkles and you'll see it in her eyes and her smile. And she goes, Kristen, that girl was you. And I was like, oh, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> and that's where the title of the book came from. Yeah. It's, but it wasn't until it, um, I 
I didn't really understand the magnitude of her statement until I started judging pageants myself and I started to notice that was so true because you see thousands of dollars worth of gowns on the stage. Very expensive. Oh, tens um, of thousands. <laughs> very expensive wardrobe and styling and um, all of this stuff, but it's not that that makes a girl win. It's not even necessarily always the most facially beautiful girl. It's this. Sometimes it's like, how did this girl, where did this girl come from? Mm -hmm. And it's because she rose to the top because she sparkled. And some people um, refer to it as the it factor. Like yes. in, yeah, you might hear people say like, she just has it or she just has this aura about her. But no one has ever really defined what it takes to get it. Or is it like only meant for some girls and other girls are just like, you know, they just don't get to have it. And so I was, I really sat down and I was like, what, what did it take for me to get that sparkle effect? And I started to look at other friends of mine and their lives and their journeys and what it took for them to get the sparkle effect. And I decided to write a book that includes 31 characteristics of what it takes to step into the radiance of your true identity. Because the truth is every girl can and is made to sparkle. She just has to peel back some of the layers that this world puts on her, that, that people put on her, that false beliefs that she might have about herself in order to get down to the sparkle. Well, I think it's so cool that, you know, that little interaction that you had with Shandy at that time, you know, here we are nine years later is really oh, having wow. a, a huge effect on your life. I know. It's so cool. Like she, we've talked about um, that conversation many times, but she doesn't know yet, like what I've written in the book. And oh, I don't think cool. she doesn't really know that the title came from that conversation. So I'm excited to like reveal it to her um, when it's time. In regards to that conversation with Shandy, I understand that she's kind of become a mentor to you in many ways and a friend. And tell me a little bit about, you know, what it's like after you leave the pageant industry and get into professional life and just life in general, having a mentor who can kind of guide you. Oh my gosh. Mentorship is everything. Not only mentorship, but like really solid community and sisterhood with girls who actually want to see you do well. And I know that that's like a common and kind of popular thing right now. Like, you know, hashtag community over competition, mm -hmm. hashtag, you know, collaboration over competition. But, and I think it's like popular, but I don't really know that people necessarily are experiencing that on a true level mm -hmm. because I think among girls, there tends to be tinges of jealousy. Maybe you say that you want someone to do well and you want to support them, but you don't necessarily feel that way all the time. Um, it really just comes down to being secure in who you are and finding other girls who are secure in who they are. So mentorship is great because then you have a girl who's older than you, who's kind of been there, done that. Like she's not struggling in the jealousy area and she actually has so much to pour out. Um, and Shandy has, is full of wisdom. And I'm just really thankful that she's kind of been like a big sister to me in a lot of ways. So, and that's something that I feel like this, the pageant world, and I know people talk about it all the time, but it's true that the pageant world really does give and provide to us girls and young women is, is sisterhood. And, um, and there's, and even though there's a lot of similarities between pageant girls, I feel like there's a lot of differences too. Like girls who are in completely different vocations and professions, like Candace Benet, former Miss Louisiana, she's a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And I've had conversations with her before with like for legal advice and just different girls who are in different areas um, different fields who can really enhance your dream or your calling and have fun along the way. So I, I had a chance to look online a little bit. I found a, a, a YouTube video in which you got to speak at a TEDx conference. And that's super cool because I know that, you know, it can be nerve wracking. They only give you 18 minutes and it's like you've got to get out your message. And I believe yours was talking about what it takes to stand out. So 
for those listening, what, what and I guess from your standpoint, what does it take to stand out in today's world? I'll do three bullet points and I'll try to keep them con- concise because okay. as you can tell, I'm kind of long winded. I'm sorry That's, about that. No, it's great. Um, <laughs> so uh, the first one is to make a decision. You need to make a decision that you are, first of all, make a decision uh, of what your dream is, then make a decision that you are worthy of your dream. And you might not feel like it right now. It does not matter what you feel. It matters what God says because his word is sovereign and it's true. And you need to start believing and thinking what he says about you. And he says that you are worthy. So if you don't feel pretty right now, if you don't feel smart, if you don't feel qualified, if you feel like you've wasted years of your life as a former title holder, you haven't really capitalized on that. Just start like, stop thinking on those things retrain your mind and start thinking and believing what God says. He's a God of acceleration. So time is not a thing. Like he's already already written your story. So he's not really surprised about how many years have gone by yet. Um, and he redeems time. So praise the Lord. Second thing is uh, to set standards for your life. Because if you believe that you are worthy, then that means that you'll start, you know, living like it and setting standards. And a lot of, a lot of that has to do with the relationships in your life, um, especially when it comes to boys or boyfriends. (laughs) Um, A lot of times it's really crazy. Very beautiful, powerful, strong women can end up in relationships that damage them or bring down, down who they are in the core and start causing them to doubt themselves. And girls, I just want to encourage you. If you are in a relationship like that, like you don't have to be, I want you to remember who you are. And remember your worth and that you need to be with someone who brings out the best in you. And um, that makes you sparkle. If you have lost your light or if your light has dimmed, if your sparkle has gone away and it could possibly have something to do with the relationship you're in, my advice is to hashtag he needs to go. (laughs) That's perfect. (laughs) third thing is be true to the essence of you. And a lot of people don't even actually know who they are or the essence of who they are. And I, I love helping girls with this. I have a coaching business called train terrain where I help girls really discover who they are and who God made them to be and the God qualities that he breathed into them specifically and uniquely. So identifying the essence of who you are and then owning it. Like for instance, for a long time, I felt like I needed to be like this like smart girl who was taken seriously. So I would like slick my hair back. Um, I would wear dark colors and I wore glasses all the time because I was almost trying to like downplay my beauty or my blondness. And uh, the truth is I am a flowy, twirly, effervescent, Disney princess loving fairy tale girl. (laughs) And I love, I love flowy dresses. So I was like, you know what? I need to be true to the essence of me. And that happened at Miss USA um, just in the gown that I chose. But I know this is for life after the crown podcast. So we won't talk about that. <laughs> it's um, okay. But anyways, it's just be true to the essence of who you are and rock it. Don't try to be someone that you're not just because it's cool on trend. You're trying to prove yourself, whatever it is, really tap into who you are, dress like it, style yourself like it, own it and make no apologies. Last thing I, I really want you to kind of explain, if you could, is I want you to go back 10 years and think about the mindset that you were in and then look at yourself now. What advice would you give to your old self as to how to approach maybe competing in Miss USA and then also how to handle life after that? You know, I think that the advice I would give myself is to enjoy and to have fun because I think I was so serious and so focused on my dream that probably there are moments that I forgot to have fun and to just enjoy the process. So yeah, I would definitely say enjoy the journey because you don't know what the outcome is going to be. The outcome is really up to God. So just enjoy and have fun. I, I want to thank you so much for taking the time today. I mean, it's really been an honor to hear kind of your perspective as a former Miss USA on what it's like and just to offer all the advice uh, that you have to the other girls. Hey, real quick, your book, Sparkle Effect, when is it coming out? August 21st. 
Cheers. Okay, very good in the fall. So we'll be looking forward to that. Well, hey, thanks for taking the time today and really appreciate you and hope we can have you back on in the future. Oh, thank you, Tim. You're awesome. Thanks for having me. Thank you. That is today's episode. Thanks for listening to Life After the Crown. Now, if you like what you just heard, we hope you'll share it with your friends. Just tell them to go to lifeafterthecrown.com. And by the way, if you have any questions that you'd like answered on one of our future shows or even a guest that you'd love to hear me interview, just email me at tim at timtialdo.com or Instagram message me at timtialdo. Until next time, remember the words of Proverbs 30, 31. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Have a great day, everybody.